Hello, my name is Martin Dean. I'm the Corporate Finance Manager at Shorts. Um, there's a bit of an introduction about myself. Uh, I've worked for Shorts for the best part of eight years, primarily involved in helping our clients in sort of variety of ways, really, including auditing, preparation of statutory and monthly accounts, development training and installations of accounting and bespoke cloud-based products for our clients. Um, for the last three years, I've focused primarily on helping our clients purely from a corporate finance uh, perspective. Um, putting simply, the sort of thing I do day to day now is buying the buying and selling of businesses, um, fundraising and, and, and investment appraisal projects, including detailed forecasting, valuations of com companies and, and just general business e exit strategy. Um, so today I want to talk around two sort of key areas, really, um, preparing for investment and, and fundraising for businesses and preparing to sell your business. So hopefully both sec sections help you. Um, and, and yes, thank you. So the first section I want to cover today is the preparation and invest for investment and fundraising for businesses, particularly focused on the, the business growth side. Um, so finding fundraising or investing investment for for businesses that want to grow. Um, so I'll just click on to the next slide to start it off. So in terms of preparation, uh, the first question I would advise you need to ask yourself is. You know, I need cash for my business growth plan. What do I need to do beforehand? So we've tried to break it down into to sort of five key points. This is a very high level. There's there's a lot more detail to go into, but try to focus on the key things that the business owners should focus on. Um, first point, really, really important. Have a clear plan and strategy. You know, focus on your, your USPs, so your unique selling points. What makes your product what makes your service, what makes your business unique and find solutions to, to mitigate your business risks. So fundamentally, make a plan and make sure it's as bulletproof as possible. So when you're, so basically you've got a document of some sort to put together, to put in front of investors or funders that says, we know we've got a clear plan about what we want to do and where we want to take the business. Um, it just really reduces the risk from a fundraising or investment point of view if you've got that clear plan. So it sounds obvious a lot of the time, but I think uh, we see examples of uh, individuals that have got really good products or services, but they've just not really got a clear plan about how they get to the, to the point they want to get it to. So first point is to really focus on that. Um, second point, prove your plan is financially viable. So investors will want to know that fundamentally they, they're either going to get a return at the end of the investment period that they're, they're investing in or uh, that their money that they're lending you, albeit they're going to be charging interest, is going to be secure for them. So preparation from a financial point of view is really key. So having management accounts and forecasts will help you identify how much you need, when you need it, and how that affects cash flow moving forward. So again, from an investment point of view to, to for growth, it's really key that the financial stack up. Um, third point, take advantage of free money for innovation. So R&D claims, so research and development claims, grant funding, et cetera. You know, speak to advisors, speak to colleagues, peers about claims and funding, free money essentially that, that you could be getting for your business. Um, not only does it help cash flow, but it also proves to funders that, that you are exploring all options. So again, it, it, it adds to that credibility of having a clear plan and strategy. Um, it gives funders and investors confidence. Um, ensure your books and records and, and contracts are ro robust and your IP is protected. So again, really key. Some, some bits may be uh, self-explanatory, but contracts, really important. Um, if if your business where contracts are key, having robust ones is really key. I can't emphasize it enough. Um, you know, speak to legal advisors about making sure those contracts are robust. 
not only from an investment point of view, but if you're thinking of an exit strategy as well, um, having those contracts in, in place and which means that your customers are tied in is really important. Um, so I've touched on there as well, your IP is protected. So if you've got a product, make sure it's protected, make sure you've got that IP protected. Um, and finally, really, uh, probably would say this is an advisor, but speak to us um, and speak to us early about your plans. Um, you know, it's that age old saying, if you fail to prepare, then prepare to fail. It really is key. And it goes back to that first point, really, of having a clear plan and strategy. The more time and effort you focus at the beginning of the process, get advisors involved at that early stage, the better the outcome, essentially. So that's what we'd be doing in terms of preparation. What should we be doing beforehand? So next question really is what types of funding are there for, for my growth plans? Um, and, and what type of funding do I need for my business in particular? So I've broken it down to three main types of funding. So we've got equity funding. So think Dragon's Den. That's going to be an exchange of your shares uh, for cash in that business. So if you've created a company, for example, you own 100% of those shares, you'd be giving up nine times out of 10, a lot of those shareholdings in exchange for cash to really ramp up that business to the next level. Equity funders tend to look forward. So they're a lot more interested in the growth plans. So this is why it's quite a good type of funding if, if, you, if you think your business is really going to skyrocket and it's got potential to do that. Um, and that's really what they're interested in interested in so often the, there are no cash outgoings or no cash outflows so example dividends what what the goal of investors from from an equity point of view is to, to sell the business on the back of those growth plans being delivered so it really is about having a clear plan thinking that you know you're going to grow the business three or four times in the next four or five years convincing a funder to to buy into that plan um, and yes you give up a lot of your shares nine times out of ten but the idea is that the shareholding that you retain is worth a lot more in the future so that's one type of funding it's equity funding again tend to look forward it's interesting in growth um, there's also debt funding so this is what most businesses will consider sort of traditional type of lending um, debt funders tend to look backwards so they're more interested in can the business um, repay the debt that I'm going to put into it? So it's to do with serviceability of that debt. Um, the main types of debt funding, so because um, most people think it's maybe going to the bank and just asking the bank for a loan of some sort, but there are also other types of funding. So invoice discounting. Um, so that's typically um, uh, funding raised on your debtor's ledger. So you exchange your, you essentially sell your invoice um, to raise finance. Um, there's an overdraft facilities. So tend to be less common these days, um, but they still are available. So if you've got one, that's that's good. Um, stock finance, fixed asset finance, and cash flow lending. I'll touch on those. But cash flow lending is a traditional loan that that you would you'd be used to seeing. Um, the other type of funding um, may not class as this type of funding, but it is. Um, it's family and friends. So uh, for a lot of startup businesses in particular, um, tends to be a case that you're convincing your family and friends that you've got a fantastic idea. So uh, getting them involved could be a type of funding, going out and asking them. Some surplus cash or assets within the business as well. Can you sell a certain asset to, to fund the project that you're doing? Or have you got enough cash in your business that you don't want to take out as dividends that maybe you could use to invest in a project um, for, for your growth plans? So surplus cash within the business, really. Um, the specialist government funding programs as well. So there are types of uh, government schemes out there that, that can help from a funding perspective. So it's worth looking at. Okay. So... What are the things to consider then, based on the types of funding that, that are available? Uh, the two main types, so, so to speak, the equity and debt funding. Um, so what are the financial implications of, and non-financial implications of equity funding? So finding an investor can be very, very difficult. Um, so uh, they, they really need to be bought into your plan. 
They really need to believe it. And often, like I say, the second point there, they'll often want a really large stake in your business. You know, typically can be getting up to sort of definitely a majority stake in most cases. So over 50%, they'll want over 50% of your business. So think Dragon's Den. That's the sort of thing. That's the sort of investor you'd be getting on board. The idea would be uh, not only would they want to invest in your business, they've also got a stake in it. So it can be really mutually beneficial because they may know a lot of other funders. They may, may, may be thinking of a buy in five, six years' time. So they just have a lot of contacts. So, yes, you're giving up a large stake of your business, but you're opening up a lot of doors as well by getting an equity funder involved. Um, and typically, an equity investor will want to see evidence of a high EBITDA return, so 20% plus. So, again, you've got to have a product or service that is generating a lot of return eventually. It might be might be loss-making initially, or you might be – there might be a need, an initial need for a lot of marketing spend that creates a loss, but but essentially an investor will want to see, well, when you switch that marketing spend off, is the return more than 20% generally? You can get investors that will take lower stuff, but they want really high return um, products and services. So what are the financial implications and non-financial implications of debt funding? So invoice discounting, I've touched on it previously that it's essentially selling your sales invoices they're not suitable for a lot of businesses um particularly if you don't raise sales invoices you don't have credit terms with your customers it just simply won't be applicable to a lot of businesses but if you do have invoices sales invoices and they are on maybe lengthy credit terms invoice discount is a solution for you um overdrafts touched on less available these days and also they're tending to be quite quite expensive so that's something to to consider um stock finance similar to invoice discounting you're getting lending on your stock essentially so perishable items uh non, non-perishable items so to speak um tend to have a lower value i.e you're very unlikely to get um the full amount of, of that stock finance um and it's hard to obtain unless you've got very high levels of stock as well uh, fixed asset finance. Um, so this is to do with your assets that you have on the balance sheet that you may have initially bought out of cash or you may have may have on finance, but you're coming to the end of the term. You can look to refinance that essentially um, uh, to generate some cash for, for any growth plans that you've got. And the last one is, is cash flow lending. So implications there is it's not ideal for startup companies. Lenders, as I've touched on, tend to look backwards for proof of serviceability. So often, often they require a personal guarantee. Um, and they tend to be expensive to offset the lender's perceived risk. So you, you may not, you know, there are there is a second tier lending market out there, but you know, interest rates tend to be getting towards the double dig, digit figures uh, if they're looking to to invest. And again, so not great for startup companies. You've got to be trading essentially for a number of years to to successfully get a cash flow lend or a typical bank loan as as you would see them um so final question really how do i find equity investors because that's often a question we get asked um first place really to start off with is is your peers and colleagues in the sector often if you if you're creating a, a product or service you've developed that with uh, colleagues and peers you may have competitor in some sense or with some synergies. So I'd say speaking to them really, speaking who they're sort of talking to is a good place to start um, because often they'll have um, an end user that's interested in their product. So, you know, attending seminars, networking events, just encouraging that networking um, is what you can actively do to to get in front of equity funders and get your product out there. But it, goes back to the first point of having a clear planning strategy, getting something together that really sells your business uh, and your model. That's really important. Um, So build your brand and get your name out into the market. So that's the whole point, really. Get out there, get networking, attend events, seminars for, you know, specific to your sector, and a lot of doors will start to open. And 
and also how do I find equity investors, speak to advisors. Again, we would say this, but we use specialist software that identify investors, um, which, which, which often helps. Uh, we've also got experience both locally and nationally. Um, and we've also got uh, a client base with, of high net worth individuals looking to invest their money in, in businesses, uh, particularly businesses with, with high profitability. Um, so that's the end of this section. Um, hopefully it's been helpful, very high level. Again, uh, very hard to, to put everything into a five, 10 minute uh, presentation, but hopefully it's been of help. Um, and please feel free to get in touch if you've got any queries.